Take a listen to this. Numbers from the Department of Justice shows the United States has the highest incarceration rate in the world. Right now, more than 2 million people in the U.S. are housed in prisons or jails. 113,000 of them are women. And the sad fact is nearly half of them, 43%, will return once they're released. It's a vicious cycle that's hard to break. Reasons for recidivism, or the relapse of a person into criminal behavior, is as varied as the reason why people commit crime in the first place. Social, economic, cultural factors all play a role. Some blame it on institutional failures, but one woman is defying the odds and proving that she can change the system for the better. They lived a life of violence, hate, and crime. Uh, assault with a deadly weapon, burglary, uh, a number of thefts, firearms, escape, you name it. I've done seven, seven terms and been in prison up to almost 25 years. I was using drugs and did it for about 10 years. I have made terrible decisions my whole life. So what made these criminals want to change? <laughs> this woman, Mimi Silbert. I love you. I love you. I love you too. A little 100 pound Jewish woman's kind of turned us all around to the way we see things. For the past 43 years, Mimi has headed the Delancey Street Foundation, an organization that offers violent criminals a second chance. That's what Delancey Street's about. It's about trying to become the best of yourself after you've been the worst of yourself. Delancey Street houses up to 500 residents. Some are sent by court order, sentenced to prison. Others come willingly when they get out. Here they receive an education, an apartment, and a job. There's a restaurant, a moving company, and a finance department to run. But there's no professional staff. The residents do it all without any government funding. When you don't take any government money, you can do what you believe in deep in your belly. Mimi believes teaching these former convicts how to give up themselves is the key to their success. And that's how you earn your self-concept. And if you don't earn that, then you have nothing to lose. And if you have nothing to lose, you're going to throw your life away. The minimum stay at Delancey Street is two years, but many ask to stay longer. To date, there are more than 14,000 graduates. We call ourselves the Harvard of the underclass. There are three rules at Delancey. No drugs or alcohol, no physical violence, and no threats. Mimi says run-ins are almost non-existent. We have no violence, which is fascinating. Delancey Street costs about $50,000 a month to run. Most of the funding comes from the resident-run businesses and the rest from donations. As for Mimi, she doesn't take a salary at all. It seems that hugs are payment enough for someone who is now fighting another battle, cancer. I have health problems. I feel they're irrelevant. I feel I'll conquer all of them. She's just amazing. She's someone that I can respect and call my mom. No matter who we used to be, it doesn't matter. You know, she sees us for you know who we are now. A woman who believes in second chances and new beginnings. If you've had a, a much better life, you can stop and you can say, oh my God, that's the way I live. That's so horrible. Never, never, never do I want to go back to that life. And Mimi started Delancey Street when she was 29 after working in prisons. A long-term study on Delancey Street graduates revealed a success rate of, get this, 98%. Wow. Now, Mimi is not alone in her effort to help inmates make that transition back into society. There are programs here on Delmarva with the same goal. <coughs> and our next guest knows firsthand what it's like to serve time and then try to get back on his feet. Now he's helping others. Reverend Don Dishroon is the president of Philemon Ministries of Delaware. Thanks for joining us this Thank afternoon, you, Reverend. Um, mm -hmm. And you do have a story. You once were in prison. Tell us about that. That's correct. You know, being a, a self-centered, egotistical, um, probably womanizing, money grubbing, uh, drugs, alcohol, broken relationships, you know, all led up to, to the situation of going to prison. Uh, originally facing a double life sentence. Wow. Uh, actually ended up with 24 years and served seven and a half on that incarcerated. And then uh, about 16, a little over 16 years on probation parole with not a black mark one. Wow. So how did it feel when you were released? 
Well, it was a it was it was a situation where the plans had to be there for employment, for housing, for transportation. Okay. Yeah. Um, I had mine all set in place a year and a half, two years before my release, uh, but through some benefactors, uh, very very uh, well known people in in the community. Yeah. Uh, my family's in Maryland, but I had to stay in Delaware. But I did make up that link, and, and it was uh, just awesome the way I did, which a lot of people, about 90% of them leaving today, do not have that opportunity. Wow. All right. So what made you decide to help others with their transition into society? Well, being in the prison ministry for about 18 years, or a little over 18 years, uh, actually going into the prisons, just seeing the men return time after time, knowing the families, the children, you know, the spouses, uh, other relatives that are hurt by this separation, uh, as well as struggling financially out there and when I see men come back and back, it just broke my heart you know to, to know what was being affected so I just uh, started reaching out to other men that are incarcerated so wh what are these men and women uh, affected by when when they try to get back out again well there's in society wise there's a lot of prejudice a lot of stereotyping um, you know it says you know they've they come out of prison I can't give them a chance or an opportunity because right. I can't trust them yeah uh, they, they don't have a trust as soon as they come out and this is one thing that's failing today Every person, I believe, needs to be given at least one opportunity, if not sometimes two. It just depends you know, on the situation. And in Delaware, a lot of people, the, the recidivism rate in Delaware is actually higher than national average. Yeah, it's, it's uh, a little over 70 percent. It's actually figured about 71 percent in a study that was done by the Delaware Department of Justice uh, in 2008-2009, completed last year showing that 71 percent, approximately seven to eight out of ten, return back to prison. Right, and it's costing money. It uh, actually costs about 34000 a year in Delaware to, to house an individual as far as to be incarcerated, uh, which 70 percent of that actually goes to staff and administration. doesn't reach to the, to the men to help them with programs or things of that nature. As someone who's been there, what's the one message you would send to someone who's trying to make that transition or has a loved one trying to make that transition? I would tell them, you know, just, just never give up. You know, if you fail and you fail, try one more time than you fail. Uh, you can reach out. There's people out there that will help you. There's several other ministries. There's several organizations that will help. You just have to reach out for it. But you have to do your part. It's not a, it's not a thing where it's a handout. It's a hand up. Right. So you have to have a plan when you get out. You need to have a plan. As a matter of fact, a lot of times the, the, the Board of Parole will require a plan of exit. They require that. And the more detailed that it is, the more that it's taken notice to it. Providing it's real, some will try to put one in. It's not real as well. Right. Yeah. So the more help, the more support, the better. The more help, the more support, the better. Pastor, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Yes, sir. Wonderful talking to you. Now, if you would like to learn more about Philemon Ministries of Delaware, go to our website, delmarvelife.com, and click on the show tab. So, from programs that help others to people who make a difference, up next on Delmarva Life, WBOC Sports Director Scott Abraham drops in to share with us the remarkable story of why high basketball coach Butch Waller and what milestone he soon hopes to reach. Then Scott's wife, WBOC's Lacey Griffith, will join him in the Del Marva Life Kitchen to help him. <laughs> Let's see how well they hold up against Jimmy and I in a five-minute recipe challenge. No chance. But first, do the demands of life have you stressed out? Dr. Oz has some advice to keep you calm and collected. Hey, I'm Dr. Oz. You need help managing stress. Well, new research shows that exercise can trigger the brain to calm down. Magnesium can reduce anxiety and relax your muscles. You can find it in spinach, quinoa, almonds, and salmon. And don't forget, deep breathing helps slow your heartbeat and stabilize your blood pressure. 